Joining us now is Hogan Gidley, former White House Deputy Press Secretary and former Campaign Press Secretary for Mr. Trump, and in a special, a special premiere appearance, the great Katie Miller, former Communications Director for Vice President Mike Pence, and one of my favorite humanoids everywhere. So, Katie, uh, bipartisanship, what do you think about all this now? Yada, yada, yada. Bipartisanship, huh? So, I don't know if you remember this, Larry, but back in April, Anita Dunn gave a quote to Ashley Parker at The Washington Post that said that we don't need Republicans in Congress. So it's not surprising that in June, they've just cast bipartisanship aside. Liberals are cheering this day. This is what they've looked forward to, is the day that they can once again get Joe Biden to go further left. I mean, quite frankly, the Joe Biden of the 1990s wouldn't recognize the person who's negotiating against himself right now. Yeah, Hoagie, uh, I think uh, Katie is right. You know, I don't hear any talk. It's funny. Look, Senator Cassidy's a nice guy, and, you know, Senator uh, Capito, they're, they're very fine people. But nobody's talking about a three or four trillion dollar tax hike, Hoagie, reversing all the Trump tax cuts that gave us such a good recovery. And by the way, Hogan, you remember the lonely guy out there in the, in the front lawn talking about a V-shaped recovery? Well, we are in the V-shaped Trump recovery, which they are trying to overturn. What do you think, Hoagie? I remember that, uh, Larry, and thanks for having me on today. And it's an honor to be on with uh, two of my good friends. It feels like old home week here today. But I just have to tell you this whole notion. I, I, was, I was told by the authorities, the powers that be, that Joe Biden is the best at brokering these deals. I mean, after all, he's been in elected office for the better part of half of a century. So why can't he bring these groups together? In part, it's because people are falling victim to what we promised would happen from the campaign, and that is that Joe Biden's staff would push him further and further left. Mm. He is an empty vessel. He is a puppet for the radicals. And so when the right comes to him and says, let's negotiate with some common sense solutions here where we don't have to raise taxes and we'll do a little bit more spending, but we're going to have to pay for it. Joe Biden says, sure. And what do you know? The staff comes in and says, no way. We're going to continue to raise taxes on people. And Larry, you told me something that was great in the White House, a lot of things, actually. But you said you watch what happened happens with Donald Trump when we cut taxes and we, um, you know, we get these corporations back into this country, people will have more money in their pockets, they can save more, and they can spend more. So it's not a shocker that when you do the exact opposite, mm. the ramifications are going to be detrimental to the American people. All right, Katie, um, I, want to, I want to go to this IRS uh, Lois Lerner 2 story, but I just want to say, Katie, you know, it's possible. I know we think Biden's an empty vessel. If Katie, Biden might believe this stuff. You know, he might have been a whole lot further left than we think he was, or maybe he covered it up during the campaign. You ever think about that? Maybe we're, remember presidents run these governments? Biden's the president. What if he's actually saying, I want this? I believe in the far, far progressive left. One second on that, Katie Miller. How would we even know, Larry? He's been not visible, not <laughs> taking questions from the media. Uh, and you see this. I mean, he ran his campaign from his basement, hiding from every single public question that there could be. The American people don't know who they elected. They elected someone who they don't know where he stands because he still has yet to take more than one press conference. All right. Well, you've got a good point there. Um, what do you make of this? Now, this is like Lois Lerner, too weaponizing the IRS. We're going to give them $80 billion, another 90 or 100,000 agents to run around. And all they're going to do is harass. This is, you know, this is the tax equivalent of uh, Facebook and Twitter. They're just going to harass conservatives. What do you make of this? Is this going to be a full-fledged scandal, Katie Miller? This is what President Trump called the deep state. Mm. I don't think there's anything more Washington than the deep state actively working for Joe Biden. They know his tax plan's unpopular, which is why now they're going through private files of information at the IRS to try to support his tax plan by saying, see, look what we found. But the reality is the Coalition to Protect American Workers ran a poll in both Rep. Boudreaux and Rep. Lamb's district where over 80 per, excuse me, over 60 percent of voters don't want to give $80 billion, which is what's in Joe Biden's tax plan, to the IRS to just hire more corrupt tax collectors. Well, all they're going to do is chase conservatives around the country. Um, you know, Hoagie, this stuff just might backfire. The lefties think this yeah. is such a great idea. This stuff just might backfire. And just correct me if I'm wrong, because you used to always help me at the last minute on news items. Is Janet Yellen yet called for a government investigation of this ProPublica thing? Or did I, did I miss that, Hogan Gidley, or, or not? You, 
You may have missed that, Larry, but look, that's not shocking. We often talk about how this administration is just a continuation of Barack Obama's time in the White House. You saw the DOJ weaponized against journalists. You saw the IRS go after conservative groups with the names Tea Party and Patriots in their names. So no one's surprised here. That's what's so sad is that I've been around a long time and I've seen some of this stuff happen before, so I'm not surprised, but I am scared for the future of this country and for Americans in general, because if they can weaponize government entities against these wealthy billionaires in this country, they can weaponize it against anybody that they don't like, anybody that pushes back on them. And I think that's a really dangerous place for this country to be in. But Joe Biden, for whatever reason, just isn't going to care because he knows what he wants is to hold on to that power and whatever levers he can pull to get it and keep it, he's going to do it. Katie Miller, just last real quick on the way out. You listen to these stories. You know, once again, we have an IRS scandal. We had one during the Obama years with this Lois Lerner lady. Um, I, you know, Katie, sometimes bipartisanship is like really overrated. Because if these bills, you know, gigantic 10,000 page bills with five, six trillion in spending and taxing, there's going to be stuff in there that's going to be horrible. Why do we want to put that through? What's so great about any of that stuff, Katie Miller? I'll give you the last word. You know, Democrats are really great at political platitudes, but they're really not great at governing. There's a lot left on the table, and it doesn't seem like they can do anything to get it passed. So, reconciliation, I guess, is their only path forward here. Reconciliation, yeah, I don't know. That's interesting. We're going to go to the we're going to go to the mattresses on reconciliation. That's where this is ending, and I don't know if they're going to get it or not. But I'll have to consult with the five families. Katie Miller, thank you very much. Hogan Gidley, as thank always. Thank you, Larry. You betcha. All right.